Come here, Snick. Look what we got, Snickers. A Christmas card. For a very special cat. Let's see what we got here. Oh, look at that. We got some goodies. It says here, hoping you've had a or had a lovely Christmas and a great new year. Your videos have been a real inspiration to me to kickstart my childhood interest in electronics again. Regards, Tristan. Tristan's workbench. So thanks a lot, Tristan. Really appreciate that. MPS A14 Darlington transistors. That works out because my video was about Darlington somewhat. And I don't know what this is, some sort of USB gadget. Won't get into that here, but if it's interesting, I might make a video on it. So yeah, appreciate that card. I think the Snickers might put those Darlington transistors to use. Right? Yeah. Snickers turns 12 years old next month. He's getting up there. But he's still healthy and runs around the house like crazy. Don't you? <laughs> in a previous video, in the comment section, someone asked, Why did I add this resistor? To this Darlington circuit and it's a good question so I figured I'd make a video about it so this configuration is a Darlington transistor where you have a transistor driving another transistor and it really boosts the gain the gain of a Darlington configuration is the gain of this transistor times the gain of this one plus the gain of this one plus the gain of this one so if this had a gain of 100 and this had a gain of 40, it would be 100 times 40 or 4,000 plus 100 plus 40. So it would be 4,140. However, most people would just say 4,000 because it's close enough. In other words, the gain of this transistor times the gain of this transistor. So why do we have this resistor here? Well, in the real world, we have to deal with parasitics, such as inductance and capacitance in these circuits. In this case, it's mostly capacitance we have to worry about. Let's pretend for a moment that this is a switch. We have a voltage here, at this point, keeping these transistors turned on. And then our input goes low, and turns this off. Well, there's some capacitance here in the base to emitter junction, and there'll be a little bit of a charge remaining. That charge tends to keep this transistor turned on longer than what we want before it dissipates. And you might think, well, won't it just dissipate through the base to emitter diode junction to ground? Well, it does somewhat, but it doesn't do it fast enough. You have to remember it's right at the threshold voltage and the impedance at that junction will be higher. We need another way to get rid of that charge faster. So what we do is add this resistor here. And this resistance is somewhat of a compromise. We want to get rid of this charge as fast as possible. You know, it's kind of like a filter circuit. There's a time constant involved. You have some capacitance and you have a resistance. The lower the resistance, the faster you get rid of that charge. You want this to be as low as possible. However, if you do that, you are now taking some of the current that was meant to drive this transistor and shunning it to ground. That means this transistor has to conduct more and you have to consider you know, thermal issues and things like that. And because you are dividing off current here, your gain is not going to be as high as it was initially calculated in a circuit. On the other hand, if you set this value too high, it's not going to dissipate this charge fast enough, and the circuit may not operate quick enough for your needs. So choosing the value is a compromise between those two issues. 
let's take a look at a basic circuit and why a Darlington configuration might be desirable. So I have a transistor here and the collector circuit is an incandescent light. The base has this resistance and a push button switch. So when I push the switch, current will flow through the resistor into the base and it will turn the transistor on and turn the little incandescent light on. So I have my Radio Shack Science Fair. This thing has been sitting idle for years. Well, a couple years at least. It's really dusty. And wow, the uh, socket board has really turned yellow. But anyway, here is that circuit I just talked about here. And if I push the button, the light turns on. I have a 10K resistor connecting to the base here. Now let's increase this to 100K. Okay, I changed it to 100K. We were conducting about 80 milliamps through this lamp with about 800 microamps into the base. Now it's conducting 30 milliamps. It's not enough to turn that light on, but the transistor warms up a bit because instead of the voltage drop happening across the lamp now, it's happening across the transistor and it warms up. Not very hot. I mean, there's not a lot of power being dissipated. But with that smaller amount of current going into the base, it's not enough to turn this transistor on to drive the lamp. So we'll set up a Darlington configuration now. Okay, I've set up a Darlington configuration just like the original drawing. And with that same 100K resistor, it now turns the light on. Even if I put my finger across the junction, it turns it on somewhat, slightly. But the current going through my skin turns the light on without pushing the switch. It's a lot brighter if I push the switch. And my skin resistance is probably a few mega ohms. So it shows you how the Darlington circuit really multiplies the gain. If you want me to go through a Darlington circuit in more detail, you know, this is just a quick setup. I'm not getting into all the numbers and everything. Uh, just give me a comment. It might be a good subject for a video. So at this point, I'll hook it up to the oscilloscope and a waveform generator, and we'll look at how the resistor helps speeding up the circuit. Okay, here is the... Figured I'd draw a schematic so nobody gets mad at me. So the field tech, right here, the field tech is plugged in to the input. I'm scoping across this bulb. You know, this circuit is not handling a lot of current. It's only about 80 milliamps the bulb is conducting through it. And I have it on the scope. Get the camera set up there. We're only running at 10 kilohertz. Turns on fast enough, but look at that. Kind of a laggy turn off, isn't it? Again, it's only 10 kilohertz. So it's really slow at turning off. I reached into my part drawer and the lowest value I found was this 120 ohm resistor. It could be a 200 or something like that. It just happens to be the value I grabbed. And I'm going to plug it in from the base of the output transistor to ground, just like in the original diagram. And Oh, look at that. Now it's turning off pretty quickly. Okay, I cranked up the field tech to 100 kilohertz. And yeah, that looks pretty awful. Let me plug the resistor in. I had the resistor removed. Well, it's better now. It's actually turning off pretty good. I wonder what that noise is. I'm getting a little bit of noise in here. But turn on is actually a problem. If I reduce the base resistor, let's see if that helps. I have that 10K resistor in there. I put that back in. 
But we might need more drive to turn this on. There you go. One thing I forgot to mention, I did have a 10K resistor between the field tech and the input. And we needed more drive current to fix that turn on time because we do have to fight capacitance there as well and other issue, transistor issues. But you can see that putting that 120 ohm resistor from base to ground really improved it. Let's see, let's pull that guy out of there. Yeah, it, uh, it's pretty awful there. And the same holds true if we were using sine wave signals. We still have to deal with that capacitance. And, you know, over around 10 kilohertz or so, maybe even less, we would start to see perhaps more distortion and loss of amplitude because of that remaining charge there on the base. So hopefully this illustrates how the resistor speeds up the Darlington circuit. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Why did I add this resistor to this Darlington circuit? Ah.